and I didn't bring any slides because I really wanted to just kind of talk and I decided what I was going to do is I was going to listen to what the doctors say and then put in my input which is what I usually do anyway. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I think is a big concern for our families that hasn't been discussed yet are shunts and shunt issues and recurrent shunt issues. And the only thing that I wanted to say is that if your child has been seizure free for quite a while and has a shunt, the first thing you really need to do is get a CAT scan and look at the shunt because a lot of times recurrence of seizures are the first symptom that the family sees that there's a shunt problem. And a lot of times people don't think of it because the child's had a hemispherectomy and there's a lot of space in there and they're not necessarily having our typical symptoms of shunt problems, headaches, vomiting, lethargy. They're just starting with seizures. So instead of necessarily just going down the panic route of, oh, seizures have come back, I would recommend, and I suspect that Dr. Mathern probably would also, that we should evaluate their shunt. I would broaden that because we've seen issues of school performance. Right. Uh, school performance, declines in school performance. Uh, things, that, things that are not typical for increased pressure. So any subtle, and it's usually insidious over a week or months. Right. And so the first thing when the family first calls us is we say, get a scan. Even if you don't have a shunt. Right. We can get delayed hydrocephalus. Exactly, which was my next point, was that, you know, there's most most people say that if you get through the first few weeks, you get through the first few months, your child won't need a shunt. Well, we've, both of us have seen, and I'm sure everybody who's, you know, been on just the, the blog and the website for the Hemi Foundation, that there are kids that have had needed shunts two years down the road. So people always ask me, and I'm sure they ask everybody else, you know, right after surgery, when can we be sure my child won't, ever, won't need a shunt? And I believe that the answer is that you can never be sure because we're not necessarily sure what triggers the need for it. But down the road, if symptoms come up, it's always something to keep in the back of, the, in the back of your mind. The other thing that I wanted to bring up, actually I just wanted, I wanted to bring it up for questions because Dr. Hadal, who is going to be doing the endocrine part of our component this morning, um, wasn't able to come. But what was to talk about the precocious puberty and all of the things that go along with that with our kids that have had, you know, hemispherectomies. We see it in our neuro kids even who haven't had surgery, and it's actually quite common, and she was going to talk about, you know, the, um, the endocrine components of that. So the only thing that I think what I wanted to bring up was feel free to raise questions. I will find out from Dr. Hadal if, we, if any of us can't answer it specifically and get back to you, but if it's a concern with your child, they need to see an endocrinologist because we are interfering with the endocrine system as well as the central nervous system. Well, it's part of the central nervous system, but it can, it's specifically um, um, can be a problem for a lot of the kids. Early, early, early onset of puberty in children who you would say, where is this coming from? You see early, you might have early onset of, of body odor that you don't understand in your kid. You may have, you know, um, pubic hair, underarm hair, and your child is five, six years old, and you don't understand why. And the reason is it's an underlying part of the whole neurological problem for having epilepsy and surgery, et cetera. It's all to, it goes all together. <laughs> Typical age of onset of puberty for girls is around nine, so they'll start getting breast development at nine, 10, 11. So if we see it at five, we know we've got a problem. Eight, we might have our endocrinologist evaluate but certainly before that, we will. And boys are usually later. They usually don't really get going on their puberty till they're 11, 12, sometimes even later than that. So girls are usually pubertal by 12, and boys are pubertal maybe by 15. Mm -hmm. So early onset, we, we worry about. 